All right, yo, what up, guys? So today we're gonna to be going over the ePro and the GeoPro solar capabilities for uh, winter, summer, and just in general. Um, this video is mainly geared towards people looking to buy this trailer, but also maybe someone that like just bought it. Um, I've owned it for about three to four months now, and I'm getting it ready for full-time living, so I kind of have to make it fit my needs more than someone who's just using it part-time. And uh, right off the bat, I realized that there's issues with the solar um, from the factory is just not enough for what I'm gonna need and maybe what you might need So I figured it was important to make a video letting you guys know that way, you know, if it works for you or doesn't and um, I wish I would have known this I still would have bought the trailer it's just been nice to know going into it because now I have other expenses and stuff like that But anyway, let's dive in All right, so the two main things you're gonna be needing to upgrade on your G Geo Pro and or E Pro model is your batteries and your solar panels um, you also are eventually probably going to want to upgrade your inverter and your solar charge controller. And again, this is different because I'm going full time. A lot of you guys who are going part time, this isn't a huge deal. You can just do a little upgrade here or there and you'll be fine. Um, I'm not an expert, but I'm just doing this video to inform new buyers. So the first thing is your battery bank. So from the factory, mine came with two 80 amp hour interstate deep cycle batteries. And I know other dealerships uh, offer different batteries. So the one you're looking at might actually have uh, like 100 amp hour batteries or something like that, which better for you. So total I have 160 amp hours and the minimum that I would like to run is 300, but realistically 400 amp hours, which would be like two and a half times the amount that um, I have now. So basically your batteries, just you probably need to realize, your batteries is what holds the energy that your solar panels are bringing in. And then the more you can hold, it's better for at night. So. If it's a cold night, you can run your heater longer. Um, and just in general, if it's a cloudy day and you're not getting a lot of sun, so your solar panels aren't getting a lot of uh, energy to transfer, you're still gonna have enough uh, power to power your laptops, your phones, um, your coffee makers, stuff like that. So it's important to have batteries that are gonna be able to hold enough energy in case, like I said, a cloudy day or the winter and stuff like that. So. Um, like I said, right now I have two 80 amp hours, so 160 total 12 volt batteries. I'm going to be upgrading realistically to two 200 amp hour batteries, but we will see if anything changes, I'll let you guys know. But that's the number one thing you guys are wanna upgrade is your batteries. And number two, doesn't really matter which order, they're both should be done is your solar panel. So we will go there now. All right, so I'm currently on the roof of my GeoPro. Uh, I have the 19 FPS model. Um, but all models, I think, from my knowledge, come with the same solar panel. So um, here is the 100 watt Go Power flexible solar panel. And as I stated, it's only 100 watts from the factory. And what I'm going to be doing, and what most minimum min, minimalist builds are, is 400 watts for like a camper van or even a small trailer like this. So as you can tell, I'm way undersized. So. What I'm gonna be doing is upgrading to four 100 watt panels that I found on Amazon. I was trying to match this one, but it's way too expensive, like 500 bucks. I can get ones on Amazon for about 150, 140 dollars uh, a piece, so it's like 500 dollars plus then the wires and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm gonna be mounting them, taking over this spot, going here, and then I would like to, if I can, put one at the front of the trailer. Um, that way, I'm getting solar. Uh, no matter where the camper's parked, if, if, the, if the back of the camper's in the shade um, or the left side's in the shade, because um, if they're all in the back, then every time I park, I gotta make sure to back up the trailer and figure all that out. So anyway, um, I recommend upgrading to at least 400 if you're gonna go full-time like me. If you're just gonna do a part-time, you'd honestly probably be fine with 200 um, watts and just getting another 100 watt panel. Um, but again, these are like $500, so I recommend getting a different set um, that way you can just run them together. But yeah, whew, a lot of words. But anyway, the reason that you want that is on cloudy days, um, I'm only bringing about like 0.2 amps um, on like a cloudy day with one. And if I had four or 400 watts, I could be bringing in about one amp, which is at least sustainable to um, not drain my batteries. And again, the more I'm bringing in, the faster I'm uh, filling my batteries up and I can fill more up, more energy up. I don't know how to describe it or dumb it down. Um, I can fill the batteries up more if I have a larger battery bank, which is why I went over the battery bank first. Because the larger your battery bank, the more you can store. And then the more solar panels you have, the faster you can bring that in to restore that. 
and on, like I said, it also helps on winter days when you're trying to run the heat and stuff like that. So those are like the two major things. Um, Cause my problem was that I went camping and we ran out of power and I didn't have any heat and it was like 32 degrees at night. But now I'm gonna take you guys inside and show you two little things that you could change. All right, so the other two important factors in your solar system is your solar charge controller and your inverter. And one of the most important things that we can't really go over is just the cables connecting everything. And that's part of what limits what you can do with this trailer, what I can do, because I would love to spec this thing out. Uh, but then I would have to replace all the wiring and stuff like that. And I don't feel comfortable doing that and going through all the walls and stuff like that to find the wiring and replace it. So I'm going over stuff that realistically you can do. But anyway, so here is your solar charge controller. Get you guys focused in. So the solar charge controller, um, this is just what lets you know what amps you're bringing in from your solar panel, which right now I'm bringing in 0 0.4, 0 0.5 amps. It's kind of overcast, so it's really not that sunny out. Um, and then 48% solar. So for AGM batteries, you really don't want to go, go below 50% because um, you just kill the batteries over time. But... Um, it's it's kind of hard to to manage that because what are you going to do just sh shut power off to your trailer and and stuff like that again this is why i say to upgrade to 400 amp hours because you're going to be getting two and a half times the storage that you would um if you have the same batteries as me which is your 80 amp hour batteries next is your voltage of your batteries this is you can see when you put a charge on your battery so if i were to engage the heater i'm not going to turn it on because i have the propane off and, and turn the heater on the voltage would then probably drop to about 11 point something. Uh, it's at 11 point now, but it would go even lower. So as you put a load on the battery, and it's also just a way to tell if your batteries are healthy and, and are charging. Um, so an upgrade that you can do to this is GoPower, the manufacturer of this, has a MPPT um, 40 amp solar charge controller um, that is, I believe, the exact same housing as this which is nice because then it can just be a direct replacement. The only issue is that the GoPower systems are so expensive and I'm assuming it's because they have um, direct relationships with dealers and stuff like that. So it's like uh, the, the MPPT, MPPT solar controller is about, I think it's like four or $500 when you can get um, like a Victron and other companies for about 150, 250 bucks. And um everyone raves about them how good they are so i don't know why i would spend double the main reason i would spend double is i just wanted to to mount the same way but it's not worth it um so that's something i'm going to upgrade in the future um and it's super important um it, it definitely is i'm not trying to overlook it but um i'm more worried right now for me with the solar panels on the roof and then the battery storage because this uh can transfer the energy more efficiently and stuff like that so um, the last piece of information that you're going to want to know about is the inverter and for the 19 FPS series oh, Knock that over so All right, so for the 19 FPS series, this is your closet which is below your TV and I put in these shelves pretty fancy and this panel right here There's screws here screws here and then down there um, that is how you get to your inverter and your inverter is what converts the um, power into usable uh, energy for your outlets in your house for like your phone charger and laptop charger and stuff like that um, So that's how you remove that there's four screws and right now it's a 1000 watt pure Cine wave inverter Which is decent, but um, like I said most minimal builds that I've seen online and uh, I would like to have is minimum of 2000 watts this has surge up to 2000, which is when you like start like a coffee maker or something real quick, um, but runs constant at 1000. So um, I'm, that's the least of my concerns for now. I'll see if it's a problem down the road once we do go full time. But that's just something I wanted to let you guys know that could possibly be a problem. All right. So to wrap everything up, your battery bank, I highly recommend at minimum 400 amp hours. If you're going to be going full time, if you're not, then you can get away with 200 amp hours. And if you're not going to be boondocking, then you really don't even have to upgrade at all. And then for the solar panels on the roof, what I'm going to be doing is 400 watts, so four 100 watt panels. Um, and I'll be doing another video once I actually 
buy them and do the process of putting it on and everything. But if, like I said, if you're going full time, we're going to be going a lot and boondocking almost all the time. I highly recommend at least 400, especially if you're going to be in colder climates and you're going to want the propane, you're going to want to run the propane heater because that uses a lot of power. Lastly, solar controller. You can upgrade to an MPPT, 40 amp, and then the other is the inverter. So why does this matter, I guess, is, is the whole culmination. Um, as I said, I was boondocking up in New York and I lost power because the solar, uh, the battery bank was only at like 37% and um, I didn't have any power to run the heater at night and it was freezing and we were boondocking so we couldn't plug in like an electric heater and then... Um, that happened two nights in a row and I did my research, realized the solar panels weren't bringing enough, the batteries weren't able to hold enough energy uh, to be able to run the heater all night. Plus, if it's below freezing, you have water in the tanks, then you gotta turn on the tank heater so your water doesn't freeze. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what led me to realize like the Geo Pro and E Pro are good. Are good if you're just gonna be boondocking like a night or two in the summer and it's 75 plus degrees, degrees out, sunny days. Um, but as soon as you go up, into cloudy atmospheres like uh, the Pacific Northwest and stuff like that in colder, colder climates, then you're gonna struggle. Um, so that's why I'm making this video uh, that way. Ugh. That's why I'm making this video that way. People that are looking to buy this and or have just bought it know the limitations and that way you don't kill your batteries like I did because I drained them all the way to 0%, which like I said, you're not supposed to drain them below 50% and they were all the way down at, at zero um, the one night. So. Don't do that. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, comment below. Hopefully I can answer them. But uh, yeah, peace.